fun little synth sitting in my house, which is nice. But yeah, dabbled here and there, but violin's the only one that um, my technical ability is uh, beyond that of a, you know, <laughs> <laughs> a decent standard. And you're <laughs> classically trained and your yep. tertiary education is also through a classical music yep. system. Mm-hmm. And as we know, <laughs> perhaps all of the major... Australian conservatoriums are attached to universities, Mm -hmm. which is, uh, I don't want to comment, but (laughs) (laughs) there's a better word than saying rigid, but I suppose it's um, course-based, you know. Very structured. Very structured, yeah. Which goes against what creating music is all about. Um, Yeah, what's in the name, conservatorium, is mm, to conserve. Is to conserve, yeah. yeah. And through that system... Did you have to put any extra effort to preserve that vision of yours throughout those years? And what were some of the challenges or what are currently some of the challenges for you Mm. mentally or even logistically? Yeah. Yeah, I really struggled um, with thinking about what I wanted to do. Like I've always had a very clear thing of like music is what I want to do and then but with education is what I want to do as well. But music well, is, 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 is has always been like the, mm. the core thing. But, you know, as a young person, I felt um, somewhat isolated from the classical world because, you know, I played some other instruments. I was interested in, in pop stuff as well. But then I never quite fit into the pop world because violin was the main thing yep. that I did. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, Not exactly so pop. No, exactly. Although I now play in... Quite a few bands on violin, which yeah. is super exciting, and doing really interesting like noise rock projects and folk projects, which is super fun. Um, so I got there, I worked out all my <laughs> little little issues. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. There's like I use the word rigid, and I think that it is a good word um, to describe a lot of mm. the way the classical world works. Um, which is a shame because there's so much incredible, exciting stuff happening in the contemporary um, classical art music, whatever you word you want to use um and space, you know but that that particular field they they crave classical musicians mm. they cr- they want classical musicians to mm. get involved because we are highly trained mm-hmm. yeah know. yeah i'm incredibly grateful for my um classical training it's given me so much um and i you know have this depth of understanding of um a very specific type of music um, that, you know, it's really informs a lot of the way that I live my life and things that I care about and music I'm interested in. Um, but, yeah, it's definitely been a challenge, particularly as I got more involved with music and going towards university and starting to think more about my place in the world and the things that I cared about. And, you know, it becomes very obvious to you all of a sudden, oh, there's, you know, have I ever seen woman's name and <laughs> anything yeah. I've studied up until this point you know mm. have I um, have we ever had a conversation about the elitism that's embedded into um, classical music have we ever talked about the colonialism that's embedded into um, our systems of learning learning music um, and so that's something I've definitely started to think more about and become more enraged about but in a very productive and mm-hmm. um, exciting way um, and yeah it's it's something that I'm trying to to tackle and work with and dissolve some of those things I've had issues with um, in the work that I'm doing and yeah. If you travel back in time, mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I just had this image. Mm-hmm. If you travel back in time, pff, I spilled mm-hmm. the water. <laughs> <laughs> if you travel back in time to when you were fourteen, mm-hmm. which is the time of that paradigm. Mm-hmm shift or you know that enlightenment i'd say knowing what you know now what would you say to that younger self Mm. it's such a beautiful question but yeah it's a hard (laughs) 14 year old (laughs) Uh, i would say that it's gonna be okay like things are gonna be fine you're gonna find your niche you're gonna find the people that you want to work with and that's been the most exciting thing is just finding people who are open to exploring things in different ways. Um, and a lot of them are people I knew when I was 14. I met Maria oh. when I, through orchestra. I met Clara, who's another musician I work with quite a lot. Like a lot of the people who I work with now are, are people that I knew then, and that's really beautiful that we've been able to grow up alongside each other and 
to think about things um, now in ways that feel really exciting and new and um, innovative and caring and yeah just say it's gonna be all right it's gonna be fine <laughs> it's gonna be all okay. that unnecessary stress yeah you know. I was a stress out little kid <laughs> <laughs> and if you travel forward in time mm. in 10 years five years let's mm-hmm. say 10 years mm-hmm, mm-hmm. what would you say knowing what you know now what would you remind her Mm. To never forget. Mm. Also a good question. That's a hard one. This is a hard one. Mm. I guess I would want my future self to take time to be proud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And take time to value yourself myself (laughs) themselves um yeah uh reflection is something that I've really come to understand the value of in a pretty profound way doing work like this doing these projects um and it's something I've never really given myself a lot of time for um but reflecting on things is how I move forward um and yeah so just reminding myself that you're doing cool things yeah. and that's great. And you've got great people around you who want mm. you to do cool things. Um, and that, yeah, taking time to reflect on what that means for you and what that means for the people around you and your communities um, is valuable and is a necessary part of doing the work that you want to do. 100%. Mm. And I think as you, as we all get older, our work becomes more efficient. Mm. It becomes more you know, what we realise now is new things, it's uh, become more of a habit. So work as such could become just like go, 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 go. Mm-hmm. And I certainly 100% believe the importance of reflection mm. and self-confirmation. Yeah. Because you could easily go into a thin and, you know, dirt oh road. Yeah. Oh yeah. Could deviate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that here. Definitely keep up the good work. Maybe in 10 years' time, we'll have another podcast in Melbourne. Yeah. (laughs) Or in a few months' time. (laughs) (laughs) Amazing. Um, Tomorrow. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, tomorrow come again. (laughs) Thank you very much. No, thank you. It's been great. That's the end of our first Mm. episode. We'll probably split this into...